Hello, David Diga Hernandez here. Welcome to Spirit Church. Today, I'm going to be teaching on faith that receives the impossible. If you're in a situation right now where you feel like giving up or perhaps you're getting a little tired and wondering when your day of breakthrough is coming, then I encourage you to stay tuned because not only am I going to be teaching on faith that receives the impossible, not only are we going to be worshiping together and you're going to be worshiping with believers gathered from all around the world watching this, but we're also going to pray together. And when we pray today, I'm going to believe God that as you watch this video, that the presence of the Holy Spirit would descend in the very room that you're watching this from, that the power of God would manifest as your faith is brought to life, and that you would receive the miracle for which you've been praying for a long period of time. So today, I believe, is your day of breakthrough. This moment is your miracle moment. Stephen Moctezuma is here. He's going to lead us in worship. that's going to unleash faith that's going to cause the impossible to occur in your life. And I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. And all to you my blessed Savior I surrender 
to Thee, and all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Mark chapter 5, verse number 24. The scripture says this, Jesus went with him, and all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the, over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch the, the fringe of his robe or the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him, so he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, Look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. The scripture tells us of this woman who had an issue with blood. She was bleeding for 12 years. And now, in the scripture, we also know that from the Old Testament and the Levitical law, that if somebody was bleeding constantly, if someone was having this type of issue or this flow of blood, that they were considered unclean, that they were to be separated, they were to be looked at as someone who must be avoided. And this woman not only suffered to the pain of the bleeding, not only suffered to the weakness that it caused her, not only suffered to the shame of being rejected and being uh, considered someone who was second in the nation or second class in that world, she was looked down upon, she was rejected, she was despised, she was discouraged, and the scripture says that she spent all that she had on trying to get better. She paid doctors and physicians and experts. And how many times do you think this woman was told, oh, this is the moment. This is the time you're going to be healed. This is the time when it's going to happen for you. Oh, we have the answer over here. I have the treatment for you here. And each time that she spent her money, not only was she giving them her money, she was depositing with her money her hope. She was putting her faith and her hope and her trust and her finance into these experts, into these medical doctors, into the people of the time who said that they could help her with this issue. So she's not only faced with the shame, she's not only faced with the pain, she's not only faced with the rejection, she is not only faced with the expense, but she is faced with the constant disappointment, the constant disillusionment, the constant getting up her hopes up only to see them come crashing down again. This woman faced upset after upset, and just when things looked like they were about to get better, the scripture says they grew worse. Just when she gave all that she had toward it, she had nothing else to show for it. She wasn't healed. She wasn't any better. Not only did her actions not result in what she was hoping, but things began to go in the reverse direction. Things began to go the opposite of what she had wanted them to see uh, happen. Has this happened to you? Have you been believing God for something and you've been putting your faith, your hope, your trust, your resources, your time, your effort, your enthusiasm into this thing? And even though you're putting your time, your resource, all that you are into this, even though you're praying, even though you're believing, even though you're faithful and you're asking and you're believing God, you're going to the word, you're praying, it seems as though not only are things not getting better, but from the looks of it, from the natural realm, what you're observing through your own eyes, it seems like things are getting worse. In fact, the solution seems further away now than it ever has before. The answer seems harder to find. The destination seems further off in the distance. It's almost like the cliche has come true for you. You take one step forward only to take two steps back. And this is where this woman was. Now, not only had she dealt with this issue for a year, because many times we can become discouraged. You know, you have a bad month, you have a bad week, you even have a bad day. And it's amazing how easily we can become discouraged that the moment something doesn't seem to go away or the week kind of turns around or maybe you get into an argument or maybe something financially happens, maybe something happens on your job, maybe something in your relationship, I don't know, perhaps in the ministry. But one bad thing goes wrong 
and we get discouraged. One day goes by and we get discouraged. One week goes by and we get discouraged. This woman dealt with this issue for 12 years. She didn't have a bad day. She had a bad decade plus two years. And throughout this entire time, she's pressing through this problem. She's dealing with this issue and things seem to be getting worse. Things are tending closer toward disaster. And then the scripture says that she heard about someone named Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were that woman and I had that problem and somebody told me, well, there's someone by the name of Jesus, at that point in my life, I would have said within my heart, no, that's probably just another disappointment. But this woman, I love her faith because in the face of all that had come against her, in the midst of her trial, in the midst of her storm, in the middle of all of the chaos of the situation, not only did she hear those words that there was someone named Jesus who could help her, but she allowed faith. She had the courage, the boldness, the audacity to allow faith to come alive within her again. She said within her heart, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, the fringe of his robe, just brush against what he's wearing, I can be made whole. And she says this within her heart. And not only does she say this within her heart, not only does she believe this in her heart and in her mind, but she takes the action to go And she begins to press through the crowd to try to get to Jesus. Now, you have to imagine that in order to get to Jesus, you have to come around throngs of people. I mean, he was healing the sick. He was casting out devils. His fame was spreading all throughout the land. They were beginning to understand that he was the Messiah that had come to save all of humanity from their sin. So people begin to crowd him. Hundreds, if not thousands thronged Jesus every day of his life. And this woman, who had this issue of blood for 12 years, was probably in a very weakened state, not just emotionally, but physically. I can imagine that such a disease would take a toll on the body to the point where you would grow weak, where you wouldn't have much energy, you wouldn't have much strength. Yet, with her faith, with her tenacity, with her courage, with the belief in her heart that if she could just touch the hem of his robe, she could be made whole. She begins to approach Jesus and press through the crowd. She begins to press through the opposition. She begins to press through, shall we say, the doubt, the discouragement, the emotional weight, the mental frustrations, the negative voices around her. My question to you is twofold. Through what do you have to push to get to Jesus? And do you have the faith to go through it? What is it that's standing in? We don't know really. I'm asking you. I want you to think about this you, because you know what's before you. And it's often easier when the enemy is very clear, very obvious, because when you know what's opposing you, you know how to pray against it. When you know what's opposing you, you know how to read the word uh, to renew your mind, to attack it. But when you don't know exactly what it is that's coming against you, it's a little bit more difficult. So I'm asking you right now, identify what it is that's keeping you from reaching the place of the promise. What is keeping you from moving toward your miracle? What is that wall of obstruction? What is the spiritual obstacle, the mental barrier, the emotional prevention? What is it that's keeping you from going to the place that you are to the place that you want to be? I'm not talking about self-help or success. I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about spirituality. I'm talking about spiritual growth and maturity. I'm talking about the restoration of families. I'm talking about the healing in your body. I'm talking about the mending of broken relationships. I'm talking about belief for God to bless you so that you can be a blessing. I'm talking about breakthrough in ministry where you know you should be reaching a certain amount of people, where you know you can be doing more, yet you seem to be stuck in this place that you can't get out of. What does it take to press through? And do you have the faith to press through it? 
this woman did. I'll tell you what kind of faith it takes to press through that crowd, what kind of faith it takes to press through that opposition. It's the kind of faith that Jacob had before his name was changed to Israel. When he grabbed a hold of the Lord and he held him closely and the Lord told him, let me go. And he said, no, I will not let you go until you bless me. The type of faith that can wrestle with God and receive a promise. The type of faith where in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, it says, if you seek me with all your heart, you'll find me. The type of faith that King David had, where he would begin to talk to the Lord so candidly that he would say things like, Lord, if you continue to let me be swallowed up, if you continue to let me go through this, what's that going to say about you? That's bold. Or how about the woman who brought her daughter to Jesus? And when she brought her daughter to Jesus, Jesus turns to her. And many theologians, Steve, have tried to make it seem like he said something else. But the truth is Jesus called this woman a dog. He said, the, the, the food of the children, it's not, it's not for the dogs. And she says, yes, but even the dogs can eat crumbs from the table. That's faith. That's persistence. You see, the kind of faith that receives the impossible is persistent faith. What was, what was the faith that brought down the walls of Jericho? It was the kind of faith that got the people to march. They marched around it for six days. And then on the seventh day, they had to march around it seven times. You know, it's always most difficult just before the breakthrough. I wonder how many people were only 24 hours away from the blessing for which they were believing and then quit. I wonder how many prayers have been offered to God and just when those prayers were about to break that wall, as we see in Daniel, when the captain of the Lord's army comes down and presents himself before Daniel, and he says, well, I would have come sooner, but the prince of the power of the air, the king of Persia, the prince of Persia prevented me from coming. What kind of spiritual activity is surrounding the promise when God has sent it, when you have believed for it? What is it going to take to have that kind of faith? Often we say, God, well, I, I've been faithful, but consistent action is not faithfulness. Consistent action paired with faith is faithfulness. You can go through something and not believe. You can go, go through something and become discouraged. You can go through something and become cynical and skeptical and hurt and discouraged. And that's the opposite of faith. But this woman, despite all she had gone through, despite all of the disappointment, despite all of the things that went wrong when they should have gone right for her, she said, if I can just touch. Not if he can lay his hands on me, not if... Not if, you know, he, he can sp say a special prayer. She had so much faith that all it took for her was a touch. You ever see how Jesus works differently for different miracles? In one instance, he spits on a blind man's eyes but through mud. In another instance, the centurion says, Lord, my servant, and he just speaks the word. Why is it that some required a touch, whereas some required just a word? It's because Jesus works with the faith that we have. And the scripture says that to each of us was given the measure of faith. You have faith. You just need to start using it. You need to start exercising it. And the way you exercise your faith is by action, is by commitment, it's by faithfulness, it's by persistence. Are you going to just sit back and let all of the promises of God slip past you? You see, your faith is your access to the promises of God. But if you don't ever use your faith, God might, might as well have never promised anything to you. If you don't use your faith, what good are the promises of God? We can't receive anything but by faith. I want to stir your faith today. I want to remind you that you serve a God who blesses persistent faith. Maybe you're watching me and you're believing for your teenager or your young adult to come off drugs. Maybe you're believing for a relationship to be repaired, a spouse, a child, a parent. Maybe you're believing for financial breakthrough, not for greed, but for the gospel, so that you can be blessed to be a blessing. Maybe you're a minister, and you're getting discouraged with the results that you're seeing in ministry. My question to you is, do you have the faith that can receive the impossible? Do you have the faith that can activate the promises of God? Do you have the faith that can lay hold and claim every word that He's spoken? The Scripture says His promises are yes and amen. Moses had faith and it was expressed 
when he used his staff. Peter had faith and it was expressed when he preached the gospel. King David had faith. It was expressed when he picked up stones to slay a giant. Daniel had faith and it was expressed when despite being threatened to being thrown into a lion's den, he prayed. What is God requiring of you? What is that step you have to take? For some of you, a step is very clear. It's very direct. It's something you have to do. For others, that step is just choosing to let faith have its way in your heart again. Maybe you're watching this and you want to be like that woman, but you've gone through so much and you've been so discouraged and lately things just don't look like they're going to turn out the way you wanted them to turn out or that the way God showed you they would turn out. You need to grab a hold of the Lord and say, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not letting go until you bless me. And we're going to pray right now. And as we pray, as we worship, you can be like that psalmist who when he's, I mean, I know the context was his sin, but this kind of tells you what his relationship was like. He said, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Just don't banish me from your presence. Moses, Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 through 13, he says, Lord, I'm not even going to go anywhere unless your presence goes with me because I need you. I have good news for you. You may have dealt with an issue for a long time, but passing by your situation, walking into the city of your pain, is the one they call Jesus. And He's not only able, but He's willing. He's not only powerful, but He's loving. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or possibly even imagine. An impossible situation is the perfect setting for a miracle. Believe right now. You may have been discouraged, but if all this message does for you is stir your faith again to persist, then praise God. But there's someone watching me right now, you're about to receive your miracle. I'm believing God. Now, this isn't for everyone. This is because I want to be make sure I'm very, because I'm going to be held accountable for every word that I say. So I don't want to promote sensationalism here, but there's someone watching who in the next 24 hours, you're going to receive an answer to that which you've been praying for. There's someone watching. That's for you. Will you let me pray for you? You're listening and you want to be like that woman who press through that crowd. You got to press through the doubt. You have to press through the opposition. And you touch the hem of the garment. It takes one touch to transform your life. It takes one touch from God and everything is different. Within 24 hours, this whole thing can be turned around. Within 24 hours, this whole thing can be turned around. Within 24 hours, you'll be like this woman. And go from desperate to fulfilled. God, that it would be done for the viewers today in Jesus. Come on, join your faith with mine. Let's believe. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one watching right now, Lord, who's been discouraged and who is believing to have the faith that receives the impossible. The faith that receives the impossible is the persistent faith. So let's go before the... Come on, get a hold of God today, right now. Father, let your very presence flood the atmosphere of that room where they're watching. And Lord, as I sit here, Let the power of the Holy Spirit that I'm feeling on me now transfer through that camera, right through that screen where they're watching and right into the very room that they're sitting in or standing in or lying in. Touch them now, Lord. I speak to that sickness now. Remove that sickness from their body in Jesus' name. Lord, that spirit of death. There's someone watching. The spirit of death has been on you. It's been hovering over you. And it's attacked you not only in your health, but there's been a shortness of breath on you. I rebuke that now in Jesus' name. That must go right now in the name of Jesus. We expose and expel it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, for those believing for unsaved loved ones, for those those who are believing, for those who don't know Jesus, that they would come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Father, reveal yourself to them. Lord, for those praying for the drug addicted, for the alcohol addicted, I rebuke the curse of the enemy off their life right now in Jesus' name. 
Lord, I rebuke heart disease. I rebuke, I rebuke right now, there's, there's a blood disorder, a very rare, someone watch me with a very rare blood disorder that when your blood flows through your stream, um, there, it, like, it, it's like, it feels like pins poking you. Um, I rebuke that now in Jesus' name. I give you the glory. There's someone, um, there's a tendon problem with your knee. It, it hurts to both bend your knee and stretch out your leg. It, it, tends, it hurts to do both if you're in one position for too long. I rebuke that problem now in Jesus' name. Lord, complete wholeness on that issue. Lord, I give you the glory. Jesus, we love you. And Father, I pray for breakthrough right now. Lord, we come against every demonic assault of hell. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against the rulers of wickedness in this present darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I rebuke it now. Every plan of the enemy be canceled. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, remove all the bondage of the enemy from their home. There's someone watching me. You've been sensing a demonic presence move about your home. You have a teenager. Go into your teenager's room and you will find music that you didn't know was in your home. And that's why they've been depressed for the past four months because of the things they've been listening to and allowing to come into their life. Go into their room, anoint their room, pray for them. There's been a depression that's come on. Show them this video so they know that you're not just playing games with them. That that, that they, they did not know, they were trying to hide it from you and you explicitly prevented that. That's where the depression's coming from. I rebuke that now, Lord. We shut that door and restore that family in Jesus' name. Lord, for all sickness to go. Lord, for financial breakthrough in Jesus' name. Let them feel your presence right now, Lord. Come on. I want you watching right now just to close your eyes, lift your hands, and say one word. And when you say this one word, the presence and power of God is going to be manifest, and you're going to feel it physically on your body. Close your eyes. Say Jesus. Say it again. Say Jesus. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now may the peace of God rest on you in the name of Jesus. Well, that's it for this edition of Spirit Church. Remember, if you consider this your church, don't forget to, to sow into the ministry. And maybe you watch this ministry from a distance. You watch our videos now and then. We want to expand what we're doing. You can bring that down a little now, Steve. We want to expand what we're doing. Um, we do television. I travel and I preach at churches. We do Spirit Church. We, we're discipling believers, worldwide television. And what we need to start doing again, we just did a, this month, we just finished an event in the Philippines where a couple thousand gathered each night. We're going to be showing you the footage from that in, in just the coming weeks. But I want to start doing more events in the United States again. And the Lord told me uh, for a season to focus on television. I was obedient to do that. And so we pulled away from the events for a little bit, focused on television. Now the Lord is speaking very clearly to me to begin to plan to do events again. And so we need financial support for that. We need one-time donors. We need monthly donors. Like I always say, it's not for the sake of greed. I don't use gimmicks. I don't use guilt. It's just for the gospel. And so as you sow, we'll be able to continue to do more for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, you're going to just move the mouse over this video. Unless you're watching this in the app, if you're watching this in the app, you're going to have to go to the section right there at the bottom where it says more. And then there's the donate link in there. If you're watching this on YouTube, on the internet, on Facebook, on any other social media, there's going to be an icon that appears when you hover over with your mouse. Uh, it's going to be a circle with an eye in it. You click on that and there's going to be two links that come down. One is make a one-time donation. The other is become a monthly supporter. If God has moved you to make a one-time donation, we ask you to do that. If you become a monthly supporter, do that. For what we're wanting to do, it's going to take tens of thousands of dollars every month. And so we need more partners to come on board. Many of you have been partnering with us, so I thank you for that. You partner with me, and you can tell my office that I said to send you a signed copy of the newest book, Carriers of the Glory, Becoming a Friend of the Holy Spirit. Well, again, that's it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible.